I want to welcome you to the Prodigal Son Podcast, and I want to tell you Happy New Year. This is a new year, 2023. Uh, It just seems like yesterday that I started this In Him Scripture study, June the 21st of 2021. This June will be two years that we've been in this study, and I want to thank God for all that He's doing in this study to, to teach people what his word says, and and assure them that they can count on what what his word says. You know, I I was praying about what to talk about today, and the Lord gave me a scripture that that I I share in the jail quite a lot, and I've shared it on this podcast. But I want to I want to read what Proverbs four twenty through twenty two says. It says, "My son, attend to my words." Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from my eyes, uh, for thine from thine eyes keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Now, I want to look this up in the in the New Living Translation and the, in the Amplified Version because I want you to get a hold of what this is this is saying. Uh, to us, to the to the people that are looking to His Word. See, God wants us to understand it, that if we'll take His Word and 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 hide it in our hearts, renew our minds to it, and and let it get down into our hearts and our minds, and 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 continually meditate on it. What did it say? It says, "My son, attend to my words." In other words, if you will pay attention to what I'm telling you. Things will change. I, I, I know it. I know it without a shadow of a doubt. Things have changed in my life and, and, and countless others through this podcast. And it's not because of me. It's all been because of what Jesus Christ done on the cross to give us the grace and the understanding and the wisdom that we can be first be born again and then take what God's word says and count on it. Let me read what the, uh, the New Living Translation says for uh, Proverbs 4 and 20, it says, my, son, my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your hearts, for they bring life to those that find them and healing to their whole body. Now, if that's not a, a reassurance that if you will attend to God's word, pay attention to God's word, and believe it, things will change for you. I promise you they will. I, I promise you. I've seen such a change. I'm going to give you an example. My son is a perfect example of someone that has taken God's word and completely transformed, been, or been transformed by God's word. But he had to take it into his heart. And, and believe it for himself. I'm telling you, you bring him, you bring him something to pray about, and he's all about applying the word of God to what that need may be. The Amplified Classic on this on this uh, Proverbs four and twenty says, "My son, attend to my words, consent and submit to my sayings." It says, "Let them not depart from your from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart." For they are life to those that find him, find them healing and health to all their flesh. I'm going to read the 23rd and the 24th verse of the Amplified Classic. It says, keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard for all for out of it flows the springs of life. Put away from you faults and dishonest speech and willful and contrary talk. Put far from you. What's that willful and contrary talk? Speaking unbelief. Speaking unbelief. I, I think about the the time when when Joshua. I think it's in the third chapter. I'll look it up and, and put it on the video. But when Joshua went in, when they went in to to spy out the land for the second time, and what did or for the first time? What did what did the Bible say? said that 10 of those spies come back with an evil report. Why was that report evil? 
because they didn't they didn't pay attention to what God had told them before they went that that land was theirs. They come back with the report that that there there were giants in the land and they could not do what God had told them to do, and that is to go in and take the land. We're being held up a lot of times in our lives because we we see ourselves as small, small things in this world. You know, the, the children of Israel saw themselves as grasshoppers. And and when God told them, You're victors, go in and take what you what you what I have given you. Now now see when you look at Proverbs and all the things that that Proverbs is saying in this fourth chapter, it says, it says, my son, attend to what I have said. Incline your ear to what I'm saying. He says, listen to what I'm telling you because it, it, it'll bring life to you and health to you if you'll start believing that and understanding that. See, there's, there's millions of people all over this world. I told them at the jail this morning. I told them, I said, listen. I said, there for years, for decades, I could believe God's word for you or anybody else in this world. I could. I had all the faith in the world in God's word for somebody else. But I did not have it for myself. I didn't ha- have faith in God's word for myself because I, look, I was too focused on what I'd done, the mistakes that I'd made, and where I stood in my life at that time because I, I stood and 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 looked at life like I was lesser than everybody around me. Why? I don't know why. I got a good idea why. But but the thing of it was, I didn't know who I was in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I didn't know what God had promised me that I could have in Him, the strength that I could have in Him, the 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 victory that I had in Him. See. Jesus died to give us all that so that we could be strong in who we are in him, in Christ Jesus. And and I, I thought for years, now, this was just my religious thinking. I, it wasn't anything that I had been taught. It was just the way I, I thought, that I thought that I had to come to God on all fours with a puddle of tears under my head. That's just the way the the picture that I had of God, of some unpleasable tyrant that couldn't be pleased, some human tyrant. Let me let me explain something to you. God doesn't have fragile human emotions. You're not dealing with some fragile human. You're dealing with love itself. The Bible says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Darkness, darkness re- represents evil. Darkness represents what goes on around in this world, and and just just I mean, completely turns people around and, and pushes them away from God because we painted a picture. Uh, religion has painted a picture of God that He just cannot be pleased. A picture of some bipolar old man sitting on his throne with a hammer in one hand and a lightning bolt in the other, just waiting for somebody to mess up so he can clobber them in the head. That's not God. That's religion. You may show you a picture of God. This, this is a, that, that lower part of that picture right there is a picture of God. That man being over, waiting on his child to run to him. I'm going to tell you something. There's a difference in, in living a defeated Christian life through religion and, and living a, a, a victorious Christian life through the knowledge that you have gotten from this book, what God has said in His in this Word right here about you, and and that's the reason we do these podcasts. That's the reason I do this video. That's the reason I go to jail four and five days a week sometimes, and 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 going into the into churches and, and ministries, helping people understand that that what I missed. For four decades, what I didn't realize that I could be in Him, that I was in Him. See, there, there's a major difference. Why? Why didn't I know that? Because I didn't pay attention to what God was saying to me, for me, and about me in His Word. I didn't hold it hot, close to my heart. What's that? 
uh, 21st verse say? It says, let them not depart from your eyes and keep them in the midst of your heart. In other words, don't forget what, what God has said. Don't forget what, what he wants, to, what he has said he will do and has done in your life. I, 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 I talk about this a lot, but there's a man, I think he's, he's finally got out. I hadn't heard from him since he got out, but the first time I gave these cards away, the first week, it's been months since we started giving these cards away. And by the way, if you want one, send me a, send me an email, get in contact with me on YouTube or Facebook or, or any other way that you, that, that we've got out here for, to contact us. And I'll send you one of those cards for free. But when I gave him that card, one week went by. I gave him out in that pod. I left, you know, finished my, my uh, duties for that week, come back the next week into that pod. And the, the, the very day that I walked in, he was scratching the last verse off of that card. And he, and he showed it to me. He said, got it done. He was really excited about it. And, and I was excited for him. And I looked at him and smiled and said, do it again. And you've never seen the, the, the uh, look of disappointment on anybody's face. He said, do it again. I said, yeah, don't you know we leak? Don't you know that we leak? I said, we forget what God has said in his word to us, for us, and about us. And we need to forever bring it to our remembrance. If we're not reading it, we're not hearing it, we're not building faith in God's Word. We need to be meditating on it and comparing it to what God's Word says, to our comparing life to what God's Word says. And because I promise you, it, there's uh, with all the assurance that I, that I can give you, that if you've got an issue that you need to deal with, God's Word's got an answer. No doubt in my mind, God's Word has an answer. But you gotta, you got to come to the place in your life that, that you start looking to the Word instead of looking to people, looking to, to, for answers in the world that we live in. Because this world, this world is, is dead set against you. It's dead set on keeping you in that religious just condemnation and shame that it's kept you in your entire life. I know. I lived it. I lived in it. I saw, I saw things come to fruition in my life. After I started giving God the full uh, control of what, 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 what I was doing in my life, and you said, well, how do you do? How do you allow God to have full control of your life? You, you start comparing your life to that word. And when, when you see something that's going wrong, you, you get in his word and you start applying that word to what that problem is, is dealing with. And I promise you, that's the best answer that you'll ever find. He said, uh, son, my son, attend to my words. If you're going to attend to something, you've got to pay attention to it. You got to pay. If, I, if I'm going somewhere and somebody says, stop, uh, stops me and says, hey, I need to talk to you. And I've got to be somewhere. I said, listen, I've got, I said, I'd love to stand and talk to you, but I've got to attend. I got some business to attend to. In other words, I got to pay attention to that. I got to get, get over there and get that taken care of. So, so what you say, well, what are you saying? I'm going to say, I'm telling you this, make it a point, make it a point to put God's word first and foremost in your life. I made it a point years ago to go out here and before I moved in life, before I ever done anything, I made sure that I took this book, God's word, and put it into my heart and into my life. I, I sowed God's word into my heart. And over the years, I've seen things just completely turn around for me. Why? Because God's word is true above all opinion. And I'm going to count on it whether, whether the sun comes up tomorrow. You understand that? I'm going to count on God's word just like I know that the sun's coming up tomorrow. I'm going to pay attention to what it says and I'm going to count on it being there when I need it. And, and, and being able to stand 
in the strength that he has given me in who I am in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and, and be able to be a light to somebody else. Because there's people all over this planet. I told some people last night, I said, there's tens of thousands of people in my town alone that do not know who they are. They may be born again, but they do not know who Jesus Christ has made them to be. And it is my calling in life, my commission from God to step out and reach those people, to teach those people what I've been taught for years, for years. You say, how? How, do, how, do you, how, do, how were you taught? I put God's word first and foremost in my life, and I started believing every word of it, started proclaiming it over, the, over my life, started proclaiming it over the, the, the situations that I was dealing with, and saw miracles happen. Why? Because I finally figured out that what I was missing, what I was, the reason I was struggling through life is because I was doubting the very truth that I needed to to let get rooted into my heart, and that was the truth of God's Word. Strength is there for you. you. You may say, I'm the weakest Christian that's ever walked. I don't know which ends up half the, half the time. Well, I'm going to tell you how to overcome that. I'm going to tell you how to, to overcome the weakness that religion brings. I'm going to tell you how to overcome the con- condemnation and the shame that religion brings. I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. Yoke up with Christ. Yoke up with his word. Yoke up with what this book says and start believing it. Start standing in it. Start start believing it regardless of what you see in front of you. I've seen, I've seen things happen. I talk about my son all the time because it's so thrilling to see what God's Word will do in a, in a person's life if they'll just get hold of it and determine that they're ready to receive what God has for them. I saw him come, come completely out of a dark place into a place that, that, that you just, you, you'd look at him and say, that's a di- completely different man than what I knew years ago. And it's the truth. And it ain't got nothing to do with me and his mama. It's got all to do with the Word, with God himself, just instilling in that boy the, the true meaning of life. You know, we stood up here on this hill and went off. The, he went, uh, the last time he walked off this hill, it was just, it was, it was unreal, the feeling that I had in my heart about what was, what he was doing. And you can talk to him about it. I'm not going to get into it. But I walked into his mom's office here at the house. Me and his sister and his mom agreed, according to Matthew 18, 19, that no harm was going to come against him. And one day that his eyes was going to be opened. To, to the man that God wanted him to be. And you know it wasn't, but just a few months later, he was, he was on his way to completely being transformed through God's Word. Months after that, I told this the other night, I said he actually, months after that, after he got his head screwed on straight, he actually sat down with me and allowed me to minister to him. He, he talks about it in his testimony. And, and I think it's the first time that he had ever listened to me in his 27, 26 years on this planet. But, but I can't blame him for it because, I mean, look, look, the world will blind you if you let it. But the Word of God will set you free from all that blindness. It'll put you in a place that there ain't nothing in this world that you can't overcome or accomplish. But you you gotta you gotta put it in there. You gotta let it get into your heart and into your life. I was preaching at a church here a while back. Well, not a here a while back, a few years ago. And I told them, I said, listen, I said, I said, it's amazing to be able to to look back over your shoulder and see what God has done in your life. And then look ahead and not know what's coming, but have the confidence that that whatever comes, God's got it. He's got it. Why? Because you're going to stand on what he says about it. You're going to believe what he says 
and not let fear, doubt, and unbelief take over. There's millions out here don't know who they are. There's mil- there's tens of thousands of people right here in Cleveland, Tennessee that don't know who they are. And I am de- determined and commissioned by God to teach them what His Word says to them, for them, and about them, so that they can overcome all this all this junk that that so easily besets them, that puts them in a place that that I'm talking about will put you in a dark place. This world will put you in a dark place if you let it. But I'm going to tell you something. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. You say, well, how do I get in him? What do I do? You know, we, we talk about it all the time. Just let me read it. Romans 8 and 1. It's a good example of what God will do if you let it. If you let him. Romans 8 and 1. It says, There is therefore now, now, today, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, who? how do you get in Christ Jesus? Well, first of all, you get born again. And if you're born again, you say, Well, I am born again. But how do I get in Christ Jesus? You put yourself in his word. You let that word saturate you to the point that everything that you walk through life and see, you compare it to what thus saith the word of God. And that's not a that's not an easy thing. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. Preparing yourself, renewing your mind, as Romans 12 and 2 says, Renewing your mind to what God's word says is a process. It is a it's a process. And and what I want you to understand for, uh, about if you'll look to God's word every day of your life and commit yourself to renewing your mind and yoking up with Him and getting in Him, you say, well, "How do I do that?" You get in His word. You put His word in your heart. You renew your mind. To what what God's word says, and and when it when your mind gets so so full of God's word, it'll start running over down into your heart, and you'll start having faith in Him. You'll start having faith in His word and believing it, regardless of where you stand. Re- believing it, regardless of what you see. People, I want you to know something today. There is nothing in this world that God can or will not do in your life. If you'll just believe him, believe him, believe what his word says, because I promise you, there's there's answers to everything. There's answers to things that you thought would would never, would never come to fruition in your life. There's answers, good answers about that in God's word. But you gotta you gotta look for it. You got you gotta allow God to minister to you. I I, I say this all the time. You got to have something in your heart that the Holy Spirit of God can deal with you about. Because if you, if your heart's not full of God's word, that's how the Holy Spirit will deal with you. The Holy Spirit will tell you something about what God's word says about a situation. I, I'll give you an example. Ten years ago, eleven years ago now, going on eleven years ago, I I gave my heart and life back to God. I was the prodigal son. I was. If there was ever a prodigal son, I, you're looking at him. I, my picture was in the dictionary. But when I gave my heart and life back to the Lord, he told me, he said, son, if I'm going to forgive you, you got a whole lot of forgiving to do. I didn't know where that scripture was at. I found it. It's Mark eleven twenty five. When you stand praying, forgive so that your Father in heaven may forgive you. When I realized that, I went on a on a on a, a long long week probably a week deal of calling people and apologizing for not being the Christian that I should have been even though we may have had issues and it may have been their fault I apologized for to them most of all I forgave them and and you know there's more freedom in that and than, than a hundred million dollars could have gave me but you see I had to know that I had to know that and and I what what the Lord told me, he said about forgiveness, that was in my heart. I didn't know where it was at, but I'd, I'd read it. I knew it was there. 
See, you're talking about having 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 a, a thought, having the word in here where God can deal with you about something, and he starts dealing with you according to thus saith the word of God. And when when you when you get that thought, you take and you say, Hold up, where's that scripture at? And I had to go look look it up. I had to find it. I had to find what what God was speaking to me about. But when I did, I, I, be, I began to realize that his spirit had something to work with after all those years. God's word's like a seed. It may lay dormant for years. It may be uh, what you've put in your heart that, about the truth in God's word. You know, you may have it suppressed and, and not allowing it to grow in your life. But I promise you, if you'll get, if you'll draw, draw close to him and let him guide you and direct you and let him water that seed and, and, and put it in your heart and in your life and allow you to come to the place that you need to know what all this stuff, that seed will take, take effect. It, it'll start growing. It'll sprout and it'll grow roots and it'll strengthen you. God will use his word in your heart if you'll allow him to but you got to allow him to you got to be in a place that you, that that you that you can allow him to i spent a lot of years not knowing where i was at what i was doing about my christian life didn't really care i was miserable and didn't know that the very the very one that i had uh walked away from and and wasn't listening to at the time was the one that could help me so I'm asking you today, do you know who you are? Are you attending to God's word? Are you paying attention to God's word? Are you hiding it in your heart and allowing it to bring life and, and healing to your body, to, you, to, your, to your spirit, man, to you yourself? I'm asking you, do you know who you are? Because I promise you, if you don't know who you are, God's word will tell you who you are. If you will just com- convince yourself that that word's true, God don't need convincing it's true. You do. I do. I need it d- convinced on, on a daily basis of who I am in Jesus Christ. And I study on a daily basis this book show, so that the Holy Spirit always has something to me or in me for him to deal with me about. But I'm going to ask you a question today. Are you born again? Are you listening or watching this video or listening to this podcast and you say, I've never, if, if I've made Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior, I don't know it. And I would like to make him my Lord and Savior. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, most people believe in God. They believe in Jesus Christ. They believe in that, that God raised Jesus from the dead to justify them. But they've never invited Jesus Christ into their heart and into their life to save them, to be their Lord. They've never invited him in to be Lord of their life. And you say, well, how do I do that? You confess him as Lord. Confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. And then, when you get born again, you walk through the door, which is Jesus Christ, into God's kingdom, then you get, get in this study with us and find out what God says about you. Overcome all this world that, that just comes up and, and wants to, I'm talking about wear you out. I'm telling you, there's, there's strength in knowing who you are in Him, not in yourself. Not in your name, address, or social security number. No, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about your bank account. I'm talking about knowing who you are in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And let him, let him lead and guide you through the truth in his word. I promise you, it'll set you free. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Now, hey, if you're listening to this podcast, you're watching this video, go to our website. I want to encourage you to download this, this uh, phone app, this, this ministry phone app. 
The, the website is the-prodigalson.com, and there's phone app links on there. Now, all you got to do is click it, and you'll go to that phone app, and you can download that phone app and download these podcasts as many times as you want. You can listen to them over and over and over. They're free. And I, I, that, that's one thing that the Lord told me years ago. He said, you make sure that you don't charge nobody for nothing. Now, there's other ministers that charge for messages and this and that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the Lord told me, he said, make sure that you don't do that. He said, I will make sure that you're taken care of. And so, why? Because he's faithful. God is faithful to his word. So listen, go download that, that uh, phone app and get these podcasts. Listen to them. Faith comes by hearing. It comes by hearing. If you got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do. Why? Because I want to send you God's word about that prayer request. I want to agree with you according to God's word about that prayer request. Now, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his word away, his truth away, all over this planet, teaching people who they are in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. Thank you, partners. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into God's kingdom through this ministry. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.